I am Dr. Alpes Maru. Uh, today I am going to discuss about various lesions of breast. This is very large topic. In fact, so many lesions have been covered in this topic. And previously, so many questions that has been asked, like discuss morphology of fibroadenoma, discuss morphology of pyloid tumor. But now beyond this, there are so many diagnostic scopes is being now available for diagnosis and prognosis of carcinoma breast so recently now trade has been changed uh, they are going to ask about immunohistochemical markers for prognosis and management of ca breast they may ask about role of fnac in the early diagnosis of breast so apart from this there are certain questions like non neoplastic lesions of breast uh, they include certain inflammatory fibrotic lesions so there is a vast number of lesions uh, in this particular topic so let's see all these things one by one start with the anatomy of breast yes you all know they lies on the superficial fascia on the pectoral region except axillary tail which pierces the deep fascia now vertically it extends from second to sixth rib and on horizontal from lateral bottom of the sternum to the mid axillary line consists of nipple areola and skin proper with parenchyma having 15 to 25 lobules and stroma that is the supportive framework consists of fibro fatty tissue now you can see this is the diagram of tdlu that stands for terminal duct lobular unit so you can see these are the lobules these are the lobules now each lobules having this 15 to 20 ductules now these are the intra lobular terminal duct itd and these are the extra lobular terminal duct that is etd now these all lobules they form sub segmental duct they join to form segmental duct and these are the lactiniferous sinus and this is the collecting duct through which milk has been secreted so these are the uh, diagrammatic representation of terminal duct lobular unit you can see in this figure b this is the histological figure these are the various tubules and now these are the lobules or you can say various small small ducts so these are about representation of tdlu you can see in this figure there are several ducts you can see on this arrow so they are these are the ducts that open up or beneath the uh, stratified squamous epithelium of this skin or on this surface now regarding stroma there are two kind of breast stroma interlobular as well as interlobular for interlobular stroma that consist of a dense fibrous connective tissue with adipocytes and intralobular stroma that envelop this acini of the lobules now they are usually having a breast specific hormonally responsive fibroblast like cells most of the stromal tumor like fibroadenoma and phyllodes they are arise from this intralobular stroma now you can see in this figure b this is the normal histological figure of a normal women's breast so you can see these are the ductule so many small small ducts these are the collagen tissue and these are the adipose tissue basically breast tissue on histology consists of fibro collagenous tissue figure c uh, you can see these are the one lobule having so many lactiniferous duct so basically this is the histology of a lactating women or we can say a pregnant during pregnancy these are the various lactiniferous ducts they are consist of milk and last figure d these are the histology of a woman with old age you can see this breast tissue consists of so many adipocytes and very few such collagen tissue so these are the basic difference from old age to younger age and with changes in during lactation.
you can see in this figure with higher magnification these are the ducts having cytoplasmic vacuolation so many ducts these are the ducts filled with breast milk so that is the these are the particular lactational changes you can see during pregnancy in the late trimester even now these are the classification of breast lesions apart from neoplastic no doubt these are very important lesions but these non neoplastic lesions are nowadays frequently asked in cad exam first of all we cover non neoplastic lesions then we move towards neoplastic lesions non neoplastic lesions includes certain inflammatory lesions like acute mastitis periductal mastitis that is also known as breast abscess third one that is lymphocytic mastopathy fourth one granulomatous mastitis fifth one that is more important fat necrosis of breast and then mammary duct ectasia so these are the six lesions that includes gr grouped under non neoplastic lesions certain neoplastic lesions are of benign epithelial lesions malignant epithelial lesions and stromal lesions your fibroadenoma and fibroids are grouped under stromal lesions they are basically benign and benign epithelial lesions again subdivided into epithelial lesions or we can say epithelial hyperplasia with edipia without edipia and malignant epithelial lesion that is the carcinoma breast proper so this is how uh, you can classify various lesions of the breast we we'll start with uh, classification of particular benign epithelial lesions so we can classify these benign epithelial lesions according to robin they are divided into three category non proliferative breast lesions these are fibrocystic diseases very important surgical source not even second category that is proliferative breast disease with atypia without atypia if it is without atypia then it is pure epithelial hyperplasia some more terminology that is sclerosing adenosis complex sclerosing lesion that is radial scar lesion and papilloma these are the lesions of proliferative breast disease without atypia with atypia includes atypical ductal hyperplasia that is adh and atypical lobular hyperplasia now third category that is carcinoma in situ that includes ductal carcinoma in situ dcis as well as lcis that is the lobular carcinoma in situ so these are the benign epithelial lesions malignant lesions just see the list first foremost that is 70 to 75 percent carcinoma breast consist of idc nos idc stands for invasive or we can say infiltrating ductal carcinoma nos stands for not otherwise specified because it has a typical malignant cells in the stroma without forming or without grouped under a typical peculiar pattern so most of the tumors are of ids and idc nos type some other categories include lobular carcinoma invasive papillary carcinoma mucinous carcinoma medullary carcinoma tubular and metaplastics are very rare type of entity so these are the list of malignant epithelial lesions stromal lesions include fibroadenoma of breast and phyllo tumors so these are the classification of neoplastic as well as non neoplastic lesions of breast now we start with non neoplastic lesions first first of all inflammatory lesions so they account less than 1% of the uh, women with breast symptoms usually present with erythematous painful breast because it is associated with inflammation sometimes it mimics malignancy that's why it is known as inflammatory breast cancer but actually it is not malignancy but it is uh, the inflammatory cells that obstruct dermal vasculature with this uh, <coughs> simulating tumor emboli so outer skin become erythematous enlarged and painful <coughs> now second entity that is acute mastitis so almost all cases of this occur during first month of breast feeding so during this particular uh, phase uh, for sucking of this infant make, a, make breast more vulnerable to bacterial infections and producing cracks and fissures in the nipple and they are rich source for staphylococcal aureus infection so again outer surface erythematous painful breast with fever these are the common presenting symptoms morphologically this as aureus infection produce localized 
inflammatory lesions and sometimes produce abscess and the streptococcal infection tend to cause diffuse spreading right, as compared to staphylococcus aureus one more entity that is periductal mastitis the name itself suggests around duct there is some abscess like things so also known as recurrent sub areolar abscess so again presenting symptoms is the painful erythematous sub areolar mass and uh, more than 90% female are of smoker vitamin a deficiency is also associated with uh, this lesion how this happen it has a very important uh, a peculiar histological findings you can see in this figure these are the normal skin epithelium right these are the lining squamous cell and this is the duct now what happen whenever there is periductal mastitis so around duct there is localized abscess formation and this skin keratin try to block this particular abscess and form a blocked plug so this is the how sub areolar mass happen so key histological feature is keratinizing squamous metaplasia of the nipple duct now keratin sets from these cells and plug this uh, entire pus so it, it eventually develop a dilated mass sometimes it may rupture and produce chronic granulomatous lesions so n block surgical removal is the necessity simple incision that drains the abscess cavity but they have a chance to recurrence so complete surgical removal that is very important so that's all about periductal mastitis one more lesion next that is granulomatous mastitis usually seen in less than one person breast biopsy uh, the causes includes systemic granulomatous disease particularly tb vaginal granulomatosis sarcoidosis and uh, sometimes it may be due to fungal infection particularly seen in immunocompromised patients now granulomatous lesions or process characterized by non caseating granuloma but obvious and it simulates malignancy clinically as well as radiological investigation next that is fat necrosis of breast it may happen either secondary to mammary duct ectasia or sometimes or due to lesser extent to due to fibrocystic disease with this large cyst formation so fat necrosis name itself suggest consist of fat tissues as well as necrotic tissues so foamy macrophages infiltrating partially necrotic adipose tissue so over the next few days this proliferating fibroblast associated with new blood vessels formation and as well as, well as chronic inflammatory infiltration subsequently there is calcification pigmentation as well as giant cell formation is there and eventually it is replaced by scar tissues so again you can see in this typical figure these are the collagen tissue now fat necrosis these are the necrotic part this one this one this one these are the necrotic part and these are the adipose tissue so fat necrosis with such kind of chronic inflammatory infiltration so this is the histology of post traumatic fat necrosis of breast next category that is grouped under non myopathic lesion that is mammary duct ectasia Uh, usually it is also known as chemical mastitis mastitis obliterans varicocele tumors comedomastitis and most of the cases are seen in fifth or sixth decade of life with a multi parous women now the disease may produce retraction or inversion of the nipple and nipple discharge is the most common presenting symptom morphologically but obvious uh, it is it has dilatation of duct consist of this inspissated breast secretion sometimes it is associated with granulomatous reaction and this duct filled with granular debris and liquid laden macrophages so you can see these are the duct uh, specimen of duct ectasia now benign epithelial lesions of breast so this is all about uh, non myoplastic lesions now we move towards benign epithelial lesions of the breast first foremost and very important that is fibrocystic disease of the breast a uh, frequently asked surgical short note uh, we can say non proliferative breast changes age group that is very important third and fourth decade 35 to 45 years of age that is the age range 
grossly on palpation breast tissue looks like lumpy bumpy tissue uh, radiologically there is a dense breast with cystic lesion so basically a uh, fibrotic proliferation increase acinipal lobules with cystically dilated breast so three principal changes uh, morphological changes we can say cyst fibrosis and adenosis adenosis means increase number of acinipal lobule cyst again it is formed by dilatation and unfolding of the lobules and sometimes they coalesce to form a large cyst so you can see in this figure these are the certain large cyst now cyst are lined by flattened atrophic epithelium or metaplastic apocrine cell these are the metaplastic apocrine cell and these all one two three these are the dilated cyst now fibrosis it is Uh, made up of fibrous tissue whenever there is rupture of cyst this material uh, reaches in the stroma and uh, there is promotion of fibrosis in adenosis increase number of acini per lobule and usually normally during pregnancy this physiological adenosis is also there but it this fibroadenosis or we can say fibrocystic disease is different from physiological one so that's all about fibrocystic disease of breast now proliferative breast lesions without atp yeah. fibrocystic disease that is grouped under non proliferative lesion now proliferative lesions without atp yeah, includes usual ductal hyperplasia that is udh we can say florid ductal hyperplasia udh and florid head has almost similar representation but having uh, uh, difference in having a number of layers sclerosing adenosis it may misdiagnose as carcinoma these are the low power view of uh, lobular configuration of sclerosing adenosis and these are the medium power view having spindle cell proliferation and fibrosis now radial scar or you can say radial sclerosing lesions now this is very important you have to understand here there is central nidus Uh, that enter up the gland and highlight stroma with long uh, radiating projection into stroma such kind of long long radiating projection into the stroma so the term radial scar is misnomer that is very important these lesions are not associated with prior trauma or surgery that is nothing to do with scar so grossly there is irregular mass or you can say such kind of radial lesion all over the tissue and central there is fibrosis mimics invasive carcinoma but it is not next intraductal papilloma always papilloma having a central fibrovascular core with arborizing pattern of epithelium so that is a definition of true papilla here secondary changes like hemorrhage infarction squamous metaplasia sometimes it may present now these are the gross appearance of intraductal papilloma such kind of polypoid mass just like rectal polyp you can see such kind of polypoid mass with dilated duct on low power use you can see this whole duct consist of such kind of papilla these are the arborizing pattern having central fibrovascular core so these are the a diagram of intraductal papilloma now next category proliferative breast lesions with atp so far we have covered non proliferative lesions include fibrocystic disease of breast proliferative lesions without atp include this usual ductal hyperplasia intraductal papilloma sclerosing radial lesions now proliferative lesions with atp and first and foremost that is adx atypical ductal hyperplasia it closely resembles dcis and it consist of relatively monomorphic proliferation of regularly spaced ductal cell but we can differentiate this from dcis by it has limited extend and partial filling ducts and from carcinoma breast it has no invasion so atypical ductal hyperplasia you have to differentiate it from dcis as well as carcinoma so you can see uh, in this figure this is other than florid ductal hyperplasia you can see streaming effect so typical streaming effect seen in usual ductal hyperplasia now this is the adh here you can see a more number of acini per lobule more number of epithelial layers but little bit atypia cytological atypia within the duct that's why it is atypical ductal hyperplasia now 
a typical lobule hypoplasia the same things happen to lobule but the cells do not fill or distance more than 50% of the acini within lobule this is the characteristic of a typical lobule hypoplasia this is how you can differentiate this lesion from lcis that is the lobular carcinoma in situ where you can find more than 50% of this acini fill with this distended uh, atypical cells so you can see uh, these are the atypical cells these are the various lobules that's why it is known as atypical lobular hyperplasia these are the monomorphic small round loosely cohesive cells and partially filler lobule typical of atypical lobular hyperplasia and now for most important thing for your theory exam that is BCIS just before frank breast carcinoma developed this is the precancerous stage you can say bcis ductal carcinoma in situ it is in situ carcinoma not uh, it, it is not present with frank invasion that's why it is not malignancy right 50 to 55 years of age group it is the uh, age group for this lesion and it is divided into high grade intermediate grade and low grade you can see high grade having a marked number of comedocarcinoma with intense pleomorphism and necrosis intermediate that is clinging type and low grade that includes papillary solid cribriform and micro papillary pattern so these are the various patterns rather you can see in this bcis group so if left untreated they are transformed to carcinoma and transformation does not occur in all cases and it occurs over a period of long time so risk of carcinoma is based on rather cytological grades and always treated with surgery sometimes radiation is needed so these are the histological findings of bcs you can see this whole duct full with malignant cells but they are remain within this basement membrane so no breach in the basement membrane so no stromal invasion no vascular invasion that's why these are the bcis you can see here also these are the cells remain within their boundary now this is again a dcis component these are the bcis cells but the things which you have to see in this slide that is this comedo type of necrosis so these are the necrotic cells and these are the carcinoma cells so necrosis and bcis so again in situ ductal carcinoma with comedo type of necrosis you can see over here solid type of in situ carcinoma but there is no necrosis here there is low grade that is cribri forming you can see such kind of cribri form pattern within the duct one more that is micro papillary again uh, low grade tumor having differentiating these things from true papilla is there is no central fibrovascular core just such kind of papillary formation within the duct so that's all about bcis and now move towards the stromal tumor the two important topics before our actual malignancy starts that is one is fibroadenoma and second is phyllo tumor of the breast so start with fibroadenoma of breast a most common benign tumor seen in the female of age group 20 to 30 years age usually multiple bilateral and young woman usually present with mobile palpable mass usually uh, epithelium of this fibroadenoma are hormonally responsive so they are increasing size during pregnancy and sometimes it may having complications like infarction inflammation and mimic carcinoma usually the stroma become densely hyalinized and there is popcorn kind of calcification that is the characteristic mammographic appearance now this is the gross appearance of fibroadenoma this is the benign tumor so well circumscribed one important word second important one well encapsulated grayish white homogeneous tissue here homogeneous why because it has no hemorrhagic and necrotic like variegated heterogeneous area so it is homogeneous well encapsulated well circumscribed grayish white and you can see on cut surface such kind of slit like areas so these are the various in periductal or intraductal proliferation of this 
ductile cells so these are the gross picture of fibroid in a brain and microscopically you can see such kind of interductular or intracanalicular or pericanalicular pattern and these are the normal breast tissue with increase or fair number of collagen tissue so these are the changes of a typical stromal spindle cells for having a benign cleft like or tubular or glandular elements in the form of either intracanalicular as well as pericanalicular pattern so these are the intracanalicular pattern and these are the pericanalicular pattern so these are the diagram of fibroadenoma of breast so most commonly present in the young aged women with mobile palpable mousy you can say mousy marks there are certain secondary changes that happens in fibroadenoma in the form of hyalinization calcification ossification in the stroma sometimes there is presence of multinucleated giant cells and prominent mixoid changes sometimes having apocrine metaplasia or squamous metaplasia certain lactational changes stromal hypercellularity always confuse it with uh, phylloid tumor and lastly giant fibroadenoma it mimics carcinoma so these are the certain secondary changes that happens in the fibroadenoma of breast now phylloid tumor cystosarcoma phylloid phylloid tumors like fibroadenoma they arise from intralobular stroma but here the presenting age is six decade rather than young age in age in case of fibroadenoma so here majority are present with a palpable mass and it behave relatively benign fashion but sometimes it may mimic or sometimes it may transform into malignant tumor grossly lesions ranges from few centimeter size to massive lesions sometimes involve entire breast as in case of malignant stromal tumor or we can say malignant phylloid tumor and these larger lesions often have bulbous protrusion but important one is this word phylloids it is the greek word meaning leaf like so due to presence of nodules on the proliferating stroma and these nodules are covered by typical epithelium and form a leaf like pattern now we can see in this figure this kind of leaf like pattern seen on the stroma and there is stromal hypercellularity so you can see no duct and glandular enlargement no acni enlargement within the lobule but you can see most of the tissue having this stromal component so stromal hypercellularity and such kind of leaf like glandular elements so this is the typical microscopic lesions like low grade lesions composed of more cellularity and few mitotic figures and compared to fibroadenoma there is increased stromal cellularity and cytological epithelia that give rise to typical leaf like architecture so these are the a typical findings of phylloid tumors of breast and regarding treatment we have to go for surgery with wide margin attrition or by mastectomy to avoid local recurrence so these are the very important stromal lesions one is fibroadenoma and second is phylloid tumors and now we move towards the malignant lesions of the breast that includes idcnos that is the most common type and certain other tumors like lobular carcinoma mucinous carcinoma metaplastic carcinoma invasive papillary carcinoma and each carcinoma has their peculiar pattern so we can see uh, invasive carcinoma 79% consist of this nos type that is idc nos 10% lobular carcinoma invasive lobular carcinoma tubular carcinoma consists of 6% uh, of all 2% mucinous carcinoma, 2% medullary carcinoma and 1% papillary and metaplastic carcinoma is very rare. So we see all morphology one by one but before going to discuss few risk factors one is age, as the age progress there is a more risk of become uh, carcinoma, develop carcinoma breast, early menarche and late first pregnancy this is a very uh, again a very important risk factor early estrogen exposure from first degree relatives having breast carcinoma there is a chance to have carcinoma breast breast density it again a very uh, important risk factor atypical hyperplasia previously happens they have a chance to become develop dcis and later on carcinoma and certain radiation exposure lead to uh, conversion of malignant cells so these are the risk factors of breast carcinoma start with idcnos typical presentation 
in 75% cases grossly now tetroid different from fibroadenoma fibroadenoma we have well encapsulated well circumscribed homogeneous but here it is non encapsulated not well circumscribed rather it is poorly circumscribed and rather than homogeneous now here it is heterogeneous having well uh, uh, we can say demarcated a hemorrhagic as well as necrotic area and uh, consistent is typical gritty or firm once you cut it you find it as like firm or hard consistency and variegated areas and sometimes it may involve in base and be above skin or we can say involve completely nipple get involved by this idc involved so you can see these are the tumor cells in the central these are the chalky white areas hard firm to hard these are the typical tumor portion microscopically all changes of malignancy we can say high mc ratio nuclear promorphism uh, increase uh, nucleoli in the, in the nuclei we can say marked number of uh, uh, mitotic figures sometimes there is uh, eosinophilic globules within the cytoplasm individual cell keratinization so many things they are cells arranged in well defined nest and core sometimes individual cells and having all changes of loss of basal polarity and merigin changes a uh, most important thing is invasion stromal vascular invasion is the key for diagnosis of idc anyway and secondary changes like calcification necrosis tumor giant cells are also there so you can see these are the malignant cells of idc anyway typically they invade the stroma as compared to dcis where the cells confined to remain within the basal membrane here they start invasion start producing invasion so these are the idc anyway these are the various various things this is how uh, we can say a uh, well differentiated idc anyways this is something a little bit moderately differentiated and these are we can say a uh, very highly anaplastic cells all cells having marked pleomorphism prominent nucleoli typical uh, we can say nuclear atypia so this is the chart from normal or non proliferative breast to proliferative lesions then atypical hyperplasia then dcis that is in situ and finally invasive carcinoma now second one that is mucinous carcinoma of breast you can see such kind of mucinous changes all over the gross structure so we can say crepitation is present well circumscribed jelly mass like septate structure seen on the gross examination the age is fifth decade now you can see these are the mucin these all are mucinous changes so the ackerman mentioned it as a cluster of tumor cells so these are the tumor cells so cluster of tumor cells floating in the pools of a mucin so this is the extracellular mucin and typical uh, characteristic of mucinous carcinoma now medullary it is associated with burka 1 mutation usually seen under 15 years of age well circumscribed sometimes it may become larger and grossly mimic fibroadenoma it is well circumscribed but it has no trabeculation on cut surface uh, sometimes foci of hemorrhage and necrosis are also there now a typical microscopic finding of medullary carcinoma is a typical syncytial formation this word is very important syncytial formation so tumor cells form typical syncytium and this tumor cells surrounding by lymphoplasma cytic infiltration showing marked number of tumor immunity good tumor immunity shown by this tumor so this is the typical arrangement of medullary carcinoma of breast now invasive papillary carcinoma majority are in situ lesions usually having a better prognosis and they are intra cystic papillary carcinoma now paget disease again a very important theory short note paget's disease it is described by sir james paget uh, dcis cells that present beneath the duct they may extend up to the lactiniferous duct below the skin below the skin of the nipple rather and without crossing the basement membrane they remain uh, localized over there and 
produce typical uh, nipplesm that is known as Paget's disease. So you can see uh, these are the DCIS tumor cells. They may travel and reach just below this uh, skin of nipple and they remain localized over here. These cells are now known as Paget cells within the epidermis. They are nothing but uh, cells of DCIS that reach up to this skin. So you can see in this figure these are the Paget cells. You can see these are the Paget cells. So many Paget cells are seen within the epidermis. So this is the Paget disease of the brain. Now invasive lobular carcinoma, one more type ILC. And the typical pattern in invasive lobular carcinoma is Indian file pattern. Tumors are arise in single file pattern, such kind of uh, single file tumor arranged in the typical pattern that is known as Indian file pattern seen in lobular carcinoma. You can see such kind of typical pattern, such kind of uh, Indian file pattern. These are the typical feature of invasive lobular carcinoma. All malignant features are present in these cells. So that's all about all malignant lesions of brain. So, so far we have covered uh, non-neoplastic lesions, non-neoplastic lesions includes all inflammatory lesions, then neoplastic lesions include benign lesions, in benign epithelial lesions having non-proliferative lesions like fibrocystic disease, proliferative lesions uh, without atypia that are the etroid hyperplasia and all the things, then with atypia include atypical ductal hyperplasia, atypical lobular hyperplasia, then we have discussed about DCIS, LCIS that is in situ carcinoma. We, they are the pre-malignant things. Then we have discussed about stromal tumors like fibroadenoma and phylloids and then we move towards the frank malignant lesions include all lesions from IDCNOS to invasive pep, uh, lobular carcinoma. So these are the uh, various lesions of the brain. Almost all lesions have their individual theory questions but as far as undergraduate course are concerned they are more like ab likely ask about fibroadenoma phylloids idc and paget's disease of breast now regarding a very newer and recent diagnostic modality so basically uh, once a patient come to you with palpable breast mass so you can diagnose them with with the help of mammography a local examination and FNSC. So these are the trio of diagnostic evaluation for carcinoma breast. As you can say screening method for breast. Now FNSC gives you certain clues whether it is benign or malignant but it cannot type the tumor like it is whether it is IDC NOS, whether it is medullary, whether it is lobular. So for that you have to go for biopsy and once you go for biopsy you come up with certain lesions like IDC NOS or you can say invasive lobular carcinoma with uh, this much tumor uh, mitosis activity and these are the necrotic area so well differentiated tumors are there or moderate or poor you can uh, reach up to that much idea but now beyond this you have to go for ILC to make it clear whether it has a good prognosis or bad prognosis whether uh, they are respond to hormonal therapy or chemotherapy as we have discussed this thing in practical ILC that is nothing but immunohistochemistry a crucial markers are ER, PR, HER2mu ER stands for estrogen receptor PR stands for uh, progesterone receptor and HER2mu that is the human epidermal receptor with a neural differentiation first two are hormonal markers and HER2mu are that is the oncogenic markers so once a patient having ER, PR positive that stands for a good prognosis and we can start hormonal therapy. Once a patient having ERPR negative and HER2 new positive, uh, it shows patient having a very poor survival rate and we have to start chemotherapy and that is the transfusumab, that is the drug of choice. So based on this ERPR and HER2 new status, accordingly we can plan a further treatment of this carcinoma breast patient. So this is a very important uh, immunomarkers is nowadays available that is ILC usually it is 8 to 10 hours procedure and it is a very costly procedure but it is very important diagnostic tool for further evaluation of these patients so this all about ERPR and how to new and important thing is last line last sentence that is the all equivocal cases of how to new confirmed by SWIFT that is the fluorescent in situ hybridization technique so 
how to new admit with fish and that is the uh, important diagnostic tool and these are the markers you can see uh, this tumor cells having nuclear positivity that is either er or pr these are the nuclear positivity and such kind of membranous or cytoplasmic uh, positivity is shown by her to new markers so er pr nuclear positivity membranous and cytoplasmic positivity uh, exhibits by this her to new markers so ihc is the very important diagnostic tool based on antigen antibody reaction on the tissue section so immuno having antigen antibody reaction histochemistry means by certain chemical reagents we produce this antigen antibody reaction on histo or tissue fraction so this is how ihc concept emerges and utility it is very uh, having a, a vital role in differentiating benign from malignant significant role in borderline tumors very useful in staging and grading of the tumors certain infectious disease particularly in heredity disorders very useful in cytogenetics certain storage disorders as in case of metabolic disease immunopathological as well as medical aspects so so many usefulness are there for ihc so it is a very important newer diagnostic tool so these are the nuclear positivity of erpr and these are the again a simple atony having er pr positive hurt you negative this is the er positive pr positive as well as hurt you positive triple positive and these are er pr negative and hurt you positive tumor having a very bad prognosis and this is triple negative again having a very poor prognosis so these are the uh, various atony er pr and hurt you photograph again you can see in invasive ductal carcinoma these are the tumor cells the same cells showing positivity for er and pr so this is he this is ihc so that's all about all lesions with ihc and now the last topic that is the lesions of male breast that is known as gynecomastia last but not the least very important thing very important findings that seen in a male patient enlargement of male breast due to hypertrophy as well as hyperplasia of glandular and stromal element so typical a uh, gynecomastia present having a high estrogenic activity that stimulates breast tissue and low androgenic activity so low counter effect counteract this effect so imbalance between estrogen and androgen this is the uh, responsible for gynecomastia to develop now less than 25 years of age it is the hormonal pubertal changes that cause uh, gynecomastia in later stage there are certain conditions one is uh, cytogenetic condition that is Klinefelter syndrome certain drugs like alcohol marijuana heroin anabolic steroids may produce gynecomastia and certain testicular tumors they are like leading cell tumor certainly cell tumor hcg secreting germ cell tumor so these are the tumors produce or we can say decrease androgen levels and this is how a patient develop gynecomastia site usually unilateral is in case of idiopathic and if it is hormonal induced it is bilateral grossly button like sub areolar mass usually carcinoma is eccentric here it is beneath the areola and it is well circumscribed dispect or this shape oval mass and microscopically you can you can see a typical epithelial hyperplasia of the duct dense number of collagen tissue and on longer duration you can see fibrosis so a typical uh, collagenous tissue as well as fibrous tissue with marked number of such kind of ductal hyperplasia collagen tissue and sometimes associated with fibrosis so typical normal breast like normal female breast like structure developed in the males so this is the histological findings of gynecomastia and rarely it is converted to carcinoma so it is it may convert it to carcinoma in the later stage if intraductal epithelial hyperplasia is too extreme so but it is very rare but we have seen so many cases of male breast having carcinoma so gynecomastia it is uh, we have to treat it earliest as possible so that's all about all lesions of breast from non neoplastic to neoplastics and recent diagnostic modalities so that's all about lesions of breast very important uh, 
theory topic uh, some practical aspects uh, that we can discuss like uh, you have a specimen of fibroadenoma breast as well as carcinoma breast in your practical exam so that's all about all the lesions of breast and if you have any query you can ask me at any time thank you very much